Hello people, Juggler here. You all voted once again and so far I have concepts for the following. The Predator, Pennywise, Alien, Chucky, Evil Within, Twice, and even Bruce the Shark from Fanning Nemo. Now we tackle Art the Clown from the Terrifier, the slasher films. This one to me has been the hardest yet. I'm not sure why, but because I've tried to make up so many perks and powers I'm kind of bring out of concept fuel, but here goes. And also, I just think that he's such a cool killer. I don't know what it is, there's just something really scary about him, something like brutally unrelenting. So Art, aka The Mime, would have to be in my eyes a form of stealth killer with some kind of brutality and some forgiveness in there. He's unpredictable, relentless, and totally silent all at the same time. So how do you create a power for someone who has all of those in his personality, or its personality, because he isn't really human, is he? If you've seen The Terrifier 2, you'll realise he is a demon or some kind of super supernatural being. He's not really a person, he's just in the form of a clown. But we are going to treat him like a mime with a lot of power. So Art starts the trial as a 115% movement speed killer, carrying a large bin bag full of crude weapons. And in my version of him, he'll only be using two of the weapons, not to overcomplicate him. I don't want him to be like another Jason concept. So his terror radius at the start of the trial will be 20 meters. So it is relatively small, and his base kit weapon is a simple hammer. Every time he hits a survivor with his basic attack, he loses one meter off his terror radius. He can drop his terror radius as low as six meters, so he's near enough undetectable. If you press a second reaction button, his terror radius is increased to 50 meters and he gains 5 seconds of 10% haste after rummaging in his bag. He reaches into his bag and takes out a large hacksaw and a horn in his other hand. Pressing the secondary attack button causes Art to use his horn. It's the same sound for all survivors at all distances. Anyone outside of his terror radius screams and suffers from the exposed status effect for 30 seconds. They also see the aura of Art intermittently for 5 seconds. Anybody in his terror radius suffers from the exhaust and hindered status effect for 5 seconds. It takes 3 seconds to swap between weapons for Art, so he can choose if he wants to leave a survivor alone or pursue an exposed survivor in the distance. Swapping weapons has a 15 second cooldown, so choose how to use his power wisely. So if you think about it, he can swap between his horn and hacksaw to his hammer every 15 seconds so you can use this in a certain way you can expose a survivor then chase them with no terror radius once you've hit a few basic attacks off so i'm going to go over how a game with him would play out you spawn into the trial you look for survivors with your small terror radius you catch one off guard and get a hit on them then you could use the weapon swap to gain a massive terror radius and then honk your horn and that survivor will be hindered and exhausted. Continuing your chase, you hunt them down. Once they're down, you head towards the exposed survivors in the distance with your large terror radius. Then swap back to your stealthy form once close by. And then hopefully downing that survivor who is exposed. The survivors will constantly be on their toes, hoping to not hear the sound of your horn. I just think this is a really different way of doing a killer. He's, he's not going to be an S tier killer. Not all killers have to be. He doesn't have amazing amazing chase potential but he is stealthy and then he can swap into like a wesker kind of massive terror radius but with a little bit of a twist of he can expose you and then he can then there's a 15 p second period of where he could you could be exposed and not have a clue where he's coming from because it's six meters the terror radius once you've obviously hit a few people with basic attacks on average per game you might get around 12 basic attack hits so that's 12 meters off your terror radius which is 20 to begin with so you're bringing it down to 8. You can only go as low as 6. So you do have a terror radius at some point. So you can't just get these easy grabs on people. People will hear you coming, but they'll, you'll be really close. It's easy to get the M1 hits on people. I, I like basic attack killers because it really opens up the whole perk potential with them as well. Speaking of perks, I'm going to go over the three teachables I think he should come with. Perk 1 is called Treat or Trick. When there is three generators remaining in the trial, all of them become blocked for 60 seconds or until a survivor is put into the dying state. So with this one, basically it's an end game perk and it gives you a little bit of a second chance to try and stop these gens popping, say if uh, people have 99 loads of gens or something like that. Perk 2 is Shy Clown. At the start of the trial, gain the undetectable status for 30 seconds. And every time a survivor's aura is shown to you, gain the undetectable status for 2, 3, and 4 seconds, respectively. Perk 3 is Scourge Hook Silence. Whenever a survivor is unhooked from a Scourge Hook, you gain the undetectable status for 20 seconds. 
So that could work really well with other Scourge Hooks. It's the idea is to, you know, you can get builds which are focused around totems. Why not have builds that are focused around Scourge Hooks? They don't seem to be as common a thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this concept. It's a bit shorter than my usual ones, but I don't think it needs much more saying about it. I think it's a very simple killer, but at the same time, it's got a mixture of... He's not the ultimate stealth killer. He's not the ultimate exposed killer. He's got a nice mixture of everything in his toolkit. And he can gain speed and survivors with a 10% haste effect for 5 seconds. So, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. And I like the fact that if you wanted to, you could go for a full... 50 meter terry radius build you know massive giga terror radius and just run around honking your horn or if you wanted to you could spend the entire game as a stealth killer it's like having two killers in one anyway take care